So what I wanted to do with this video is talk about a book that I read recently called The Global Achievement Gap by Tony Wagner. And I'm hoping that uh, by making these videos, I can remember more about the book. And in turn, uh, if you haven't read the book, you can use these videos to give you a sense of what the book is about. And if you have read the book, maybe these videos can serve as a, uh, an additional way to review material that you might have read a while ago. Uh, so to kind of motivate the, the reason behind the book, and, and at the beginning, Wagner gives a bunch of statistics that he quotes. And, and the first stats are involving graduation rates. So it turns out that in the United States, uh, the typical graduation rate for high school is about 70%. I mean, 70% of people, uh, of students who, who are in high school end up graduating. Uh, and in contrast, other countries seem to do a lot better than us. And, and uh, uh, one of the first countries mentions is Denmark, which has a 96% rate. Uh, Japan has a rate of 93%. Uh, and then Poland is at 92%. And then finally, he mentions that Italy, Italy is at 79%. So all these countries are doing way better uh, in terms of graduation than the U.S. is. Now, on top of that, uh, he mentions that about one-third of students are college-ready. And that would imply that about two-thirds are not ready for college. Uh, at the time that they actually graduate from high school. And so uh, that's a major concern. Uh, and the other big concern that's mentioned in the book is that about 40% of students, so 40% of students are actually taking remedial courses when they enter college. Uh, so they're taking classes uh, uh, that they of con concerning material that they should have already mastered by the time they started college, but they haven't, and so they have to take remedial courses. And then finally, 50% of students, or one out of two students, and this is an estimate, actually, so I should clarify this last number is not based on, I think, hard data, but it's an estimate that about 50% of students who enter a college do not graduate. And that's actually very concerning given that uh, you have all these people entering college, uh, but a lot of them are not able to graduate, especially nowadays with college tuition being so high uh, and, and the college education being so critical for many other facets of life. It is quite concerning that a large fraction of students uh, fail to graduate from college. Now you may be asking yourself, okay, what is the reason? Why, why, are, why are all these stats the way they are? And, and Wagner's hypothesis is that, and what he kind of starts in the book and he argues, is that uh, a while back in, in 2001, uh, so in 2001, there was an act that was passed called the No Child Left Behind Act. So No Child Left Behind. Uh, often abbreviated as uh, NCLB, so sometimes I'll refer to that uh, in these videos. And No Child Left Behind was really around, uh, was, was motivated by the idea of decreasing the gap between kind of the, the upper echelon, the, the, the upper class, and the lower class um, people, people who are much more poor, in terms of academic uh, achievement and, and so on and so forth. And it turns out that to implement No Child Left Behind, one of the big challenges has been that the implementation of No Child Left Behind has involved uh, being able to assess students. And the way that's done today is they do tests to assess. So they're basically uh, test-based assessments. Uh, so students are asked to take various kinds of tests. And, and based on the results on these tests, uh, there's a determination made about whether the school was successful in implementing the No Child Left Behind guidelines. Now, what, what that ends up doing is, is the tests then in turn effectively drive accountability. And so uh, there's a lot of emphasis now on the performance of these tests. And so and in particular, schools are very concerned about how their students perform, because if their students perform poorly on these tests, then these schools uh, might you know, get, get hindered in, in many different ways in terms of funding. Teachers might uh, you know, not get their jobs back. They may not get tenure and, and so on and so forth. And so as a result, uh, people are very nervous about these tests, and they put a lot of effort into doing well on these examinations. Now the problem with these examinations in particular is that the examinations do not test a number of important things. They, they really kind of test rote knowledge, but uh, there's no testing of skills like critical thinking. So no critical thinking uh, is, is tested on, on, on these assessments and, and they're very much kind of rote learning. Uh, there's no kind of reasoning, and I guess it goes hand in hand with critical thinking. Uh, and then no kind of application of knowledge. Okay, no application of knowledge. 
Okay, and that, that's a major concern because it, it seems that in, in today's world, we really do need uh, these types of skills. And then and there are some other statistics that are provided in the, in the book to kind of further uh, cement this argument. In particular, there's a study that was done by the National Institute of Health, the NIH, in 2007. And they found, for example, that uh, fifth graders, and this is one particular study among a particular set of fifth graders, uh, and these are fifth graders in a public school that was in a, in a middle class public school, and it turns out that 90% of them, or 90% of their time, was spent uh, listening and just kind of seated. So they were spent, they were just seated and listening to the teacher 90% of the time, and, and the remaining 10%, or actually I guess 7% of that time, they were actually in groups and working together, and I'm not sure about that remaining 3%, but uh, for the most part, the, the emphasis here is that most of their time in class, the vast majority of their time in class, was uh, not spent engaged in any type of, of deeper reasoning or critical thinking. And, and ultimately, um, these skills, things like critical thinking and, and so on and so forth, uh, they are going to be increasingly important, increasingly important, especially as we move into uh, what they term the knowledge economy. Knowledge economy. Okay? So for the most part, I mean, really, the, the emphasis of this part of the book, the beginning of the book, is really kind of motivating this need to reform the way that education is done. And in the next video, I'll talk specifically about the skills that Wagner claims or believes we should espouse uh, to help uh, improve the situation considerably.